Hi, this is Phil Marriott. Welcome back to another video at philmarriott.net with the latest entertainment news, reviews and interviews. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, hopefully you are, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more of the same. Today, I bring you a video interview with two girls from one of the most, in my opinion, exciting bands of 2016. I went to the Roundhouse in Camden in London, quietly crept through Clean Bandit soundcheck, ventured backstage to a dressing room to chat to Reva and Sarah from London electronic band Nimo. So I'm here at the Roundhouse in London with Sarah and Reva from Nimo. How are you? Hi, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're about to um, support Clean Bandit here yes. tonight, yeah, which is pretty are. exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, we're really excited. We were here a couple of nights ago supporting Mo on the like London date of our two yeah. week tour of her, um, and it was just such an amazing venue to play in. So actually, just really lucky that we get to do it twice in one week. Now, my first question. Does dancing make you brave? Yes, it does. I thought you were um, going to say that. Yeah. Makes you lose your voice. Pardon? It makes you lose your voice. That's why I sound like this today, so. Uh, slave to the rave, as we were saying. It does, yeah, like the lyrics, everyone keeps picking up on those. On, obviously, it's the title of the song, but people yeah. have been talking about it a lot, but I think, yeah, it's an important lyric to us. It definitely represents our kind of ethos as like friends and as a band, especially in terms of the way we express ourselves. And yeah, dancing definitely makes us brave. But it is your homage, isn't it, to nightlife, London nightlife in particular? It's a homage to, to, to nightlife, but it's also, um, it's also really important. Like we just think it's a message that we kind of want to put out, um, especially with like the clubs closing and stuff at the moment. It feels like it's really ringing true. Not We wrote the song ages ago, yeah. way before that even started happening, but like, it's definitely something that people need to remember, I think. I was going to ask you about that because, of course, you've played Madame Jojo's, which has closed recently. Yeah. And there are other clubs like Fabric, not just the gay scene, but, yeah, you know, there yeah. are cl clubs all over that are, that are yeah. finished. And it's really sad, isn't it? Yeah, especially for people like us who kind of found ourselves in these clubs and, like, you know, especially for gay artists as well. Like, you know, going out and clubbing is a massive, you know, place where you can find yourself and find fr friends or like-minded people and just explore your identity in general. So... You know, yeah, it's a massive shame, but I just hope it doesn't spread too far and that like there does come a point when they start to recognise that it's a culture that does need to be saved. Sure. Hashtag. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I love the video as well for the new single. Um, obviously, choreography plays a big part in that. And you look fantastic. Dan is it the first time you've danced in a video? I record that off. People are going, oh, you look really great. We're yeah. Dancing, we're like... And it's all female cast, isn't it? Yeah. Not just in the video, but behind the scenes. Yeah, the yeah, most of producers. it. Yeah. There's a f obviously a few like male, like it was like the DOP yeah. or whatever. ADs, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was like female director, all female cast, female um, stylist, producer. Yeah. Girl Commission. power. Commissioner. <laughs> there's a moment, there's a scene where the train goes past and you're kind of throwing shapes down yeah, below. And I, I just funny. think, all well, the people on the train must have been looking I down. So what the hell is going on like down there? Free, wasn't it? <laughs> they, were like, they were like, all right, we've got it. There's a train has gone past at a perfect moment. And there's another moment where it looks like there's a dog lip syncing, yeah, yeah. which I love. Yeah. Was that your dog or? Uh, it's a friend of ours, yeah. Our friend's dog. The girl that's holding it actually owns the dog. In the yeah. So it could be a new idea for RuPaul, maybe drag race <laughs> yes, with dogs. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, your songs are upbeat and you know they're kind of dance pop, but they lyrically, they some of them are quite dark. Yeah, I don't know. Some songs that kind of they do, we definitely start out when writing a song. They do tend to be sort of like more stimulated and like thought provoked, I guess, by things that are darker that are happening in life. But often it turns out to be a bit more of a celebration. Like the track "Unyoung" for of ours, for example, is like started. Um, because I was thinking about my, my dad's parents passing away in his 20s and now I'm in my 20s and it made me think about my family and what my children will know my parents as and all of that stuff. But in the end it just became, when we started the instrumentation and everything, it just kind of became a celebration of life. So like, some of them do appear to be quite morbid subjects. I guess they're serious subjects, but yeah. I don't know. Some of it is more of a kind of exhilarating subject tone. Yeah. And dilute this Lyrically, it's about uh, love going stale, is that right? Or becoming mundane? Yeah, I guess there's no joy in that, is <laughs> <laughs> We get the best out of the songs, like yeah. like you said, emotionally and personally, by like physically like letting stuff go as well. Yeah. I find it very difficult to stand still and sing about things like that. It's funny as well, because we were saying, we like grew up and when we met, we were just listening to a lot of like grime music and hip hop and stuff. And I think there's like the energy in that that we kind of fell in love with. Yeah. Kind of carried through accidentally about knowing it. I guess it's just who we are. I was going to ask you about Justin Bieber, where he had a bit of a huff and walked off because the crowd... Well, yeah, exactly. He's in Manchester as well, I mean, you can't yeah. really tell Manchester. <laughs> oh, come on. Is that something that's ever happened to you? Because he does chat a lot yeah. at gigs. Yeah, he waffles. That doesn't happen to us. We don't talk much, actually, at all. It's like, we don't even really stop. So, 
if we do talk it's just like yo okay <laughs> like come on but like yeah no we played in Manchester recently actually and they were like going for it I would never <laughs> say anything bad about Manchester no, no. has it ever happened though uh, in your career that well, you've like, had a, a well not just being heckled but just a problem on stage where you thought no sod this I'm just going to walk off I can't oh, yeah. I can't deal with it yeah yeah ma- not, not it's mainly on stage rather than from it's the mainly audience. technical yeah. right but okay like, I've stood in front of the audience so many times and seen so many people just actually having a very outwardly honest conversation about ah. perhaps my gender or perhaps just like our style or like anything or is that a boy or a girl anything like that like that happens that happens all the time I can what like it. jeering at you or no like just just, just oh that's so we, rude because when because when you know like when you put up that um like fourth wall if you like like you stand behind it and you're on stage and often I think the audience stand and they feel like they are detached from you as well and they've got a sort of distance and they, even though you are only five feet away I'm on stage and you're not on stage therefore I can stand there and sing like nobody else is there and they can kind of talk like they think I can't hear. I think once like my like left bum cheek like sh- shook with fear and I was like oh my god and then I just had a word with myself. <laughs> and I was like three years ago yeah like I, I don't it doesn't unnerve me if anything I think it's exciting and I think I like the fact that people I don't know. I think it's interesting. Like I don't look like other girls, so and well, I can't do anything about it. I think it's great. People are challenged by it. Yeah, yeah. it makes you play, play better. It makes you like grow as a person. And, like, That's one of my pet hates. Um, well, one is talking in cinemas. If you're gonna watch a movie, <laughs> why are you talking like when you're watching a movie? Oh <laughs> god, are you like that? <laughs> I could go to the cinema with you then. <laughs> so, uh, what's going on? No, I don't know what's going on. Because <laughs> we're watching Shakespeare. So yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. Yeah, I get you on that. <laughs> and that one as well. I was going to ask you about equality because I said on the way in that you're a band with attitude and I love that because I think it's really important if you're in a band you've got to kind of have a almost not not a front but you've you've got to have a passion and you're obviously very passionate about your music what about the equality side is that something that you're vocal about oh yeah yeah I guess like I don't know we try and put that out with everything we do like that sort of our entire life and identity is built on that being something that we all believe in and understand and like fight for I guess like music is the most unifying thing that I can think of. We have got songs that we've written about that and like about what we were talking about, about the identity thing and being perceived on stage as something and kind of overcoming that, I guess, and get, making that your stronger artist and everything. Yeah. So yeah, it is important it's to us. It's just so inbuilt within us. It's like, you're almost not conscious that that's what you're saying. Yeah, and then I guess in some ways you stand up for every single day on stage. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The album, very excited about the album. Can you tell us when it's out and what's on it and what inspired you? Uh, it's out. Early next year, at the yeah. moment, it's like down for like February. Keeping us waiting. Yeah, you know, surprised if that changes. If anything <laughs> changes. Um, in terms of what's on it, it's a load. It's like a big range. There's like a lot of like. There's a lot of different type of pop songs on it. But there's a lot of pop on it. It's a pop record. There's also some sort of like more 5 a.m. sort of like blissed out stuff with like it's a bit of saxophone in places. Songs about paying, oh, wow. paying the rent. Yeah. There's um, <laughs> and there's like um, some more kind of like slightly more left stuff like on Young and things like that. Um, it's pretty diverse, I think. It's yeah. a beast, I think. It's yeah. Like, it's a proper live, like five person, emotional, heartfelt. Very it's like yeah. it's there's two vocals the whole way through the album. You know, it's like it's big, I think. I love the sound of that because so far the indications with the singles that you've released, it's it's a really strong album by the sounds of it. I haven't heard all of it, obviously, but. But we support you and we love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. So, so nice. good luck with all of it and Cheers. good luck tonight with Clean Bandit as thank well. You. It's Thanks good to see you. Thanks for your time.